Welcome. I would like to talk to you a little bit about the use of icons and consecrated objects for use within rituals and within your healing space. So there are several different tasks which need to be performed for which you can use the icons or the consecrated objects. One of the tasks is as a source of energy, a source of power to charge your space with. Another reason you might want to use it is to give you guidance. Uh, another reason might be that you want them to actually take control, to harmonize the space, to uh, do actual work there. Or you can use them to protect the space or to clean the space. So there's many different tasks which you can in a way outsource to a different uh, consecrated object. So it's of course very essential that you pick the right one for the right job. If you want something to protect your space, it needs to be visible, it needs to be able to manifest on the level where the problems are or where the pollution is. So if you have some very nice, very high vibration icon, um, it's great for meditation, it's great for charging your space, it's worthless for protecting your space. So, in the processes of purification when, and guarding the space, it has to be able to work with lower energies, with lower vibrations, with lower entities, with nasty spirits. So you need something with a lot of skill, with a lot of ability. Uh, on these levels and um, it is usually good also to feed your guardian regularly because fighting, cleaning, transmuting energies it takes a lot of power and if you don't make a regular sacrifice or you don't make a sacrifice in the ritual then usually these tasks are the first one which will um, yeah, fall apart because um, a consecrated object or an icon will also need an energy source and the energy source needs to provide energy of the right vibration to be able to work on that vibration. So if you sacrifice something which has a very nice high energy it won't be very useful for dealing with very low energies. You need to have something with a similar energy as to empower the thing which you're putting there. So it needs to be by nature existing and being able to manifest on that level and it becomes even more powerful if you give it the tools to manifest more strongly on those levels. So the purification and the guarding, you need something which is relatively uh, fearsome, which can scare away the powers which you don't want there, because ultimately you don't want to turn your ritual space into a battleground. If things have the idea that they can get in, if they think they can get energies, if they think they can win, if they think they can disturb things, then you will have a conflict on your hand. And ultimately you want to deter them. You want to have a very big dog there which makes sure that nobody thinks of going into the house because there is a big dog in the yard. So that is basically also the function of a protective icon or a protective consecrated object. It needs to be very awe-inspiring towards these other powers which would otherwise disturb the ritual. Um, the purifying one doesn't have to be that fearsome but it has to be able to deal with these heavier energies, with the lower powers, with all the pain, the pollution, instead of yeah, running away from it or being harmed by it. Um, for the purification process, personally I tend to use the Earth itself, the Earth Mother, uh, whether you call her Sirvitwin or Gaia or Mother Earth, to me it's all the same. But there is this great collective we're all a part of and which is accepting everything and everybody 
and it is not afraid of the dark side of people or of the negative emotions of people. It loves them and accepts them just as much as it loves the good sides and the positive traits and the virtues of people. So for me this is a very nice loving power which can help to purify the space, which can help stabilize the space to keep from getting too polluted. And these two are very essential. You need uh, something to act as a drain, as a purifier. You need something to keep disturbances out. And then we come to the third thing, which is something which will harmonize the space. Often this will be the priest or the priestess themselves or the shaman who will do it. But it is also possible to work together with an icon or a consecrated object to create a certain type of energy in that space. So within the shamanic tradition you would usually go for an animal and uh, you ask this animal to take control over the energy of the space so it will guide the energy to manifest it on a certain pattern, in a certain flow so that the ritual will have a specific purpose or a specific effect. So I tend not to use the same saint or the same animal uh, in different rituals. It's always very specific for the ritual I want, the effect I want. I then try to custom pick the right um, power to stabilize the energy, to harmonize the energy into either healing energy or protective energy or a cleaning energy or a transformational energy. And the transformation also has to be very specific. Um, so there's a lot of yeah, thought and some experience which goes into picking the right one for that ritual. Um, usually with protection and purification I just have my general fixed choices and I use them for pretty much every ritual and just build up my relationship with them in that way. Um, in case that you're working in your ritual with many powers from the outside, so you're inviting other spirits, other yeah, angels or deities to join in and help, I usually want to invite a person who will control the spirit traffic, who will in a way make sure that the right people arrive at the right time and do the right thing. So. Um, Typically you would ask then for Hecate, um, another guardian of the crossroads, uh, Papa Legba, um, or similar powers, um, um, also Selune, the goddess of the moon, um, is also a very typical power which can be used to make sure that the right things do the right thing at the right time. Often gods of and goddesses of the underworld can also be very useful for this task. Um, so Hela in the Nordic tradition, uh, Anubis in the uh, Egyptian tradition, they're also very nice powers to be working with in yeah, getting the right rhythm in the space, getting the right powers to come at the right moment um, to the space. Um, then ultimately I usually want to have a person in overwatch position, like the highest possible authority who can command everything if necessary, if I forget something, if I'm distracted, that they can take over if necessary. So my personal preference is to uh, invite one of the messiahs of light to uh, take up this role. Um, you can also work with other um, relatively messianic powers. So usually solar powers, solar spirits, they tend to be very good at combining energies, at weaving uh, energies, at being very constructive um, with those things. Also the, the heads of pantheons, uh, so Odin, Zeus, um, um, Ra, they're also deities which are very useful 
in taking this overwatch position and leading the rest of the pantheon, the rest of the powers to work together well within such a ritual. Um, I tend to invite them, but they're not always the most active part or the focus of the ritual. For instance, I might want to work on somebody's relationship life and work with Freya, uh, the Nordic goddess of, uh, of love and fertility. And I will invite her husband Odin to be there, but not to work actively, but just to yeah, have an overwatch position. So it is not always that the person with the highest authority is also the one who has to do all the work or who is in the center of things. They can just be a little bit on the side, keeping an eye on things. So, I've talked a little bit about um, different roles which the objects can play. Um, if you work with an icon, it is important to put it in the right position within the ritual space, because different positions, depending on how you do the ritual, have a different effect. Um, so, for instance, if you want the healing to be done on a specific organ, that would be the place where you put the icon. And if it is more about the space, well, protecting the space, you would put the icon at the entrance to your healing space. If it is about uh, giving power to the space, you would want to put that icon in the central location of the space, so it can emanate the power evenly throughout the space, or if you have an altar, altar in one of the corners of the space then place it on the altar because it's supposed to be the source of transformation. So if you have an icon and usually empower the icon by placing a candle in front of it and in this way you're creating a doorway because the light itself is a doorway between higher energies, higher powers and our world. So um, I like to use light symbolism when working with consecrated objects. The other thing is also very much the vibration you're looking for. So here I have an angel and I don't use it very specifically as I want this or that angel. I use it more as a connection to the angelic layer of the cosmos. So if I want really the divine authority to uh, yeah, work on uh, that ritual and within the ritual space to make sure that me nor anybody else does something which goes against the divine law, then I use angels. Then we have here an icon, in this case, of Saint Seraphim of Sarov. So it's very much an icon of the visitation, of how the saint was visited by other saints, and in this case also the Mother of God. And this is what happened to him, was a visitation. And if I want a visitation to happen, I want other spirits to be there, to join me, to uh, bless the person I'm working with, for instance, if I'm doing uh, an initiation so that the person becomes connected to, with a higher power, with a divine power, then this is a very good icon to use because the very event which happened to this very holy person is the event I'm trying to recreate in my own healing space. So this is an icon I've worked with quite a lot and I like it to have it present at least on the altar. Uh, when I'm doing an initiation. Then here I have the icon of uh, two saints. And these saints are a little bit particular. Um, because one was the victim of the other. So one of them used to be a black magician who attempted to use his skills in the pay of some rich merchant on an innocent woman to have her fall in love with that uh, said merchant and she defended herself not by magic 
but by the strength of her faith, by in a way not trying to fight herself with her limited skill, her limited power against the great magician, but by surrendering her spirit and giving it into the care of God, into the care of the Lord. And of course he found that his power could not overpower that of the Supreme Being. And he also then realized that his power was very small, very relative, and that he was in a way misguided in his quest for spiritual development. And he changed his ways. And this way Saint Cyprian and Saint Justina are often together on an icon to create protection, to create safety. And this is a very nice icon because it creates safety not just for one person who is working with it, but actually it creates a safety, a blessing for the whole house. So this is an icon I can also recommend heartily for using. And here I have the bear. It is the power animal I work with most myself. And the bear is the animal of the West in the medicine wheel, which is the place of going within, of in a way the psychologist who is in a way looking into their own darkness and trying to find their power, their light to liberate themselves from the darkness. So it's a very powerful healing animal, very good transformational animal, which can really help you to find yourself again. I've worked with it a lot in different healings. But I'm very grateful to Grandmother Bear and her companion, the Salmon, who helps to bring the knowledge of the past lives of the ancestors. And together they turn the darkness not so much into a place where people get confused, people get lost, but they turn it into a great ocean out of which wonderful treasures and wonderful powers can arise for the fisherman who casts his nets. And telling stories when you're using the icons really helps the other people who are in your ritual space also to connect to their power, to attune to the right vibration and thereby to benefit from the space they're in. So on the left hand of the screen you see the icon of an angel, an angelic being. In the center we have the vision of Saint Cyprian who was visited in his cabin in the woods. And on the right we have the icon of Saint Cyprian and Saint Justina, which is one of the most pro strongly protective icons within Orthodox Christianity I found. And in the front we have the bear. which I use a lot in healing rituals and in my psychological practice.